right, welcome back party people. Today, thought I'd give you a tour of the shower system that we have going in the van. Kind of wanted to wait to do this video until we had some time on the shower system just to kind of tell you what the quirks are and what parts work well and what parts don't work so well. So if you haven't been watching the videos, we just uh, came back from a three week trip to the Northeast and Great Lakes areas with my dad. And the two of us actually used a shower every other night for almost three weeks. All right, babe, you wanna say hi? Hey, party people. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so that is a seven gallon water tank there. And you notice there are a couple of input hoses there. So this is my water source. And I just, uh, we carry three different seven gallon uh, tanks with us. So we can carry at most 21 gallons and it's all inside. And that keeps, you know, from having to worry about getting frozen usually at least where we are so there are a couple of different tubes in there one's a filler tube that connects to the outside i'll show you that in a minute that's where i can actually fill up the tank one of those is a tube for this little small water spout here we use that a lot to like brush teeth and wash hands because it doesn't waste a lot of water but if we need to fill up like a pot we use the larger water faucet there the filler tube for our water tank is located just here so right now i've got like a little bendable spout on it since those uh, faucets are w two different flow rates, I just did a smaller tube because this little small water dispenser here is lithium battery powered. And uh, it needs a smaller intake hose than the faucet there, which has a much larger volume input hose and has a larger flow rate. So instead of teeing all that stuff off, I just have multiple inside uh, our spout there. So coming from our water source, the first thing we hit is our filter that we filter out any micro particles. From there, we go to the intake or the suction side of our pump. All right, so we use the braided hose on the suction side of the pump because that type of hose will collapse under suction from the pump. So you want a hose that is reinforced and that braided hose there is reinforced. So out of the pump we go down to our accumulator tank it's almost like having a little small water tank and it's pressurized but it does help with you know short cycling of the pump out of the accumulator output side here we run up to our various t's and then up to our hot water heater here so we all know about these types of instant hot water heaters uh, propane enabled you can see my propane tank down below and so i have a propane propane line run up here so the way these hot water heaters work these instant hot water heaters so if you have the the propane turned off you're just going to get whatever temperature of water is in the water tank but if you have it turned on it'll actually ignite and start warming up the water so we can get cold water by not turning on the propane and uh, if we turn on the propane then we can get hot water out of both our faucet and our shower head which is mounted up there all right so that was the water supply system so let's talk a little bit about how it drains and where it drains to. So this is our drain hole in the bottom of the van. So we just cut a hole all the way through to the bottom. And that hole actually has a pipe, piece of PVC pipe, straight down to the tank and straight into the uh, tank. This marine filler cap here lets us cap it off so we don't uh, get any smells or anything coming back into the van. So now I'm going to get up under the van. I'll show you the tank and I'll put some footage in here of me building the uh, the frame for the tank to hold the tank and putting together some of the straps to actually strap the tank down. But I'll show you some of the mounting points under there as well. So this is an 18 gallon tank. It's actually an 18 gallon freshwater tank. So you can see here I use this strapping from... Uh, from like a, a local hardware store. And I've got one that goes lengthwise across the tank, all the way lengthwise of the tank. I've got one that goes across the corner here. You can see this one. And then there's another one that goes across the corner in the back. So you can see here the method I use to tighten these down. It's just a bolt, uh, washers, and a nut to, and a lock nut on the other side and bend this strapping put your bolt through it then you're able to tighten it down and that gives you a good nice snug fit on the tank 
and allows you to tighten it up later on if you need to. I put some inner tube, bicycle inner tube, and then some tape around the inner tube to reduce the vibration of the metal strapping against the aluminum frame that uh, holds this tank up to the van. All right, you can see there, there is the far corner strap. You can see the bolt that I used, and uh, that is a pre-threaded hole already. Those are some of the other bolts uh, as well. And uh, those are already pre-threaded as well. As a matter of fact, that is where my step sides actually connect. So those straps are connected in the same spot. There you can see the far corner and the padding I have. There's another bolt hole for the strap that's on the frame rail there that's already pre-threaded as well. So on this particular strap, you can see uh, there's enough access room where you can insert a bolt through a hole and put a nut and washer on the bolt. So most of the holes were already pre-threaded holes I used and this particular one on the front end here was a bolt and nut. All right, this is just a view of the end of the tank here. You can see the inlets. You can see that I have a uh, half inch drain have a one and a quarter inch inlet that I'm not using at the top since I drilled a hole directly in the top of the uh, tank. You can see some insulation I put on top there, some closed cell insulation just to keep the, uh, the vibration down. And you can also see some of the uh, heat shield that I've put on the side of the tank there as well. But uh, that other half inch on the top there is the this other half inch tube here is actually the vent and uh, that runs just over the uh, rear wheel well. Here's another view using my remote control car with camera and light mounted. So maybe this will give you a different perspective. It's very hard to film laying under the van when it's not jacked up and uh, trying to get a camera focused. All right, from the top perspective, that tank sits between the frame rail, which is just about here, and the exhaust, which is just over there. So this tank is sandwiched underneath in between the frame rail and the exhaust, and the hole exists more toward the front than toward the rear, because this, I'll show you why we put the hole here. We don't have a lot of options if we're putting the tank here because of where our sink is and where our rails are for our third seat. All right, so that was the drain system for our shower. So we don't put any other gray water other than our shower water in that particular tank. We can if we need to. All right, now we're gonna show you how to set up the shower. This is our hula hoop shower, and basically it's just an HDPE hula hoop. So the cool thing about this particular hula hoop is it has a disconnect, and the hula hoop actually comes apart. And uh, that gives you a little bit of freedom when you're hanging your shower curtain for the first time. And then also you can size the hula hoop to whatever size shower that you want as well. And we have some, uh, some cable ties. And the cable ties are holding a plastic curtain and a regular shower curtain. And we offset those in the inside so water won't uh, leak out of the hula hoop shower. The other thing is, is we have some of these quick connects right here that are installed on the hula hoop. There's three of these and they connect to the ceiling of the van up there. So it's real easy to just connect this to the ceiling of the van, drop your shower curtain down and you're ready to go. All right, so there you can see the quick connects. There's one here, there's one there, and there's one on the side there. Get one in, two in. All right, so that's our hula hoop shower and it is really sturdy there. All right, and that's what the uh, hula hoop shower looks like hanging down. So I'll tell you why we have it tied like that in a minute. But uh, so that's step one, put the shower curtain up, attach it to the roof of the van using those quick connects. Mm -hmm. Step two is we want to get our little doggy pool out and put our drain pipe down into our gray water tank. All right, and this is our doggy pool and it just kind of folds up into a little small doggy pool and 
we put a drain in it. We found somebody on the web that had done similar and uh, sealed it up with some some black Sika Flex there. You can see that. But so far, no leaks. Pool's held up to uh, a little bit of abuse. It does have another drain here, but we never use it. Well, this one, we're gonna put the hole in here. It's a drain hole. And it, all the way, put it up here, nice and flat. And we're gonna put in here, the curtain inside. And then we need to uh, make sure it's a double, double tie. So we're gonna untie this. All right, so there is the uh, shampoo cloth and uh, soap holder. And it's just uh, affixed to the hula hoop just like the curtain is with some uh, cable ties. All right, so remember earlier I was telling you about the, uh, the water fill inlet there. So that's important. If you have one of these uh, instant hot water heaters, they're not really instant hot. So in the winter time, you want to be able to run some water through it to get it heated up first before you, uh, you aim it at yourself and you don't want to waste that water um, because it's good water so i just feed it back into the water tank system so so i actually use one of these beer bong funnels with a tube on it and i have a quick connect that fits my particular system put that on there like that instead of wasting water we just uh, feed it back into the system and you can see the temperature over there. See, how it's like at 80, 82 right now. 93, 95. So basically just feeding some water back into the system there just to get some hot water into the hose. And then uh, once you got the hot water in there, you're good to go. You don't need to do that unless, you know, it's like winter time or whatever. I'll be right back. I got the refresh. Woo Your time. All right, so system's not perfect. Obviously, if you don't have the van level or at least tilted a little bit toward the hole, you're going to still have some water there. Simple solution is just pick up the pool and let it drain out. Then we take the doggy pool out. If it's a nice sunny day or we know it's going to be nice and sunny, we take the doggy pool out. And sometimes I'll sit it on the hood of the van, let it dry out. If not, we keep the doggy pool here. And I'll show you how we stow the curtains in order to let the doggy pool dry and the bottom of the curtains dry and so they don't uh, get uh, mildew or mold on them. So we just use one of those flexible ties and we tie the bottom up. So we kind of make a ball and uh, then just let the, the ends of the curtains hang like that. And they drip dry like that and they'll drip into the pool. Because it's not perfect, it's not all going to drain out because the drain is a little bit higher than the bottom of the pool. So you just have to kind of work with what you got there. But if you've got your tank vented properly, it'll drain out really quick. And then once it dries, we even sometimes just um, fold the rest of the curtain all the way up and put a, a uh, bungee cord across the top and just leave it up there. We'll take the pool out and stow it, but we'll leave the curtain out if we know we're going to take a couple of showers in a row. Um, instead of putting the curtain up and down all the time, we'll actually just, uh, we'll take the bottom and bungee it up um, to the ceiling of the roof. And uh, once it's dry and that, uh, you just kind of duck under it a little bit as you get in. So that's the way it works. So the great thing about this shower is, is that we can also take it out of the van. So you can go take the hula hoop and hang it on a tree outside and uh, shower outside as well. Cause we have a portable shower pump. We can take our portable tank outside and uh, shower out in nature if that so pleases you but it's always good to have an enclosure to take a shower at especially if you're uh you're somewhere where you can't really uh you can't really uh be outside and have water running on the ground it's always good to have a tank and just have it self-contained there the other good thing about having the shower head here right by the sink and by the side door of the van if you want to wash your legs off like if you're coming in from the beach or a trail or whatever you can just uh you can just spray off right there on the side so yeah, we're going to call this one a wrap, and until next time, skill up and ride, van up and go, take a shower, and bathe. Everybody need the plan B. That's it. Cha-cha for now. Bye. Bye.